going on guys this is Joe Young coming at you with another video uh, today we're going to be doing a quick tip video on CO2 so things to consider um, when getting CO2 um, when I guess everybody kind of goes through this phase um, when you are getting in, into planet tanks um, eventually you'll probably consider you know wanting to get CO2 um, so when do you really actually need CO2 so really that really comes down to your tank and your goals for your tank so if you are planning to just keep like Anubias um, Java fern like moss like really low light plants and kind of like a lower tier in terms of like lighting and CO2 requirement then probably you don't really need CO2 like obviously if you have CO2 they'll grow faster you know it'll help them you know flourish a little bit better but really you don't really need it so if your end goal for your tank is to get really nice you know like plants you know grow exotic plants grow plants that n you know no one has ever seen before or like things like you know really nice carpeting plants um, stuff like that then um, eventually you'll have to dip into CO2 to kind of flourish um, I guess really well um, I'm not saying that you can't you know grow plants without CO2 um, because I've done it and definitely you can do it it's just um, a lot easier with CO2 so now that you have some sort of idea in what you want to do with your tank um, let's say you are considering CO2 uh, for me, um, I knew that I was going to dip into CO2 because I really wanted to try you know, a variety of different plants and I knew that I was eventually going to go to highlighted plants, medium light plants that really do require CO2 to thrive. Um, so you're in the same boat. Um, we want some CO2 in our tank. Um, the first thing that you'll probably um, do is you know, research a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to kind of list all the things that you really need off the bat uh, in terms of the get like your CO2 set up. Um, I know when I started, I didn't have, I had no idea what to get. I was like, okay, maybe I need a regulator here. You know, what else do I need? Like connections, stuff like that. So here's the list of stuff that you'll, you know, you'll need uh, a regulator, um, a diffuser, a CO2 tank, basically, um, a drop checker, um, a bubble counter if your regulator doesn't have one, um, timer, and some tubing. Um, CO2 tubing. So let's start off with the first one real quick, uh, regulator. Um, now obviously there's two ways to do it. Um, there is a do-it-yourself method, um, which I highly um, would avoid um, just because it does work, um, but the thing is it's inconsistent. Um, you know, one day it might be really well, another day it might not be, and then it really depends on the batch that you make. So I would not really trust it because when it comes to CO2 in plants, consistency is um, what's going to help prevent um, basically algae blooms and just really headaches with the tank. All right, with regulators, the part where a lot of people get stuck on, because um, I know I did, um, the first thing you, you know, you go into a planet tank, you know, you buy a nice tank, you buy, you know, all these equipment, you buy all these rocks, you buy all these, you know, driftwoods, um, and then you buy a really nice light and then you're like, oh crap, you know, I need a CO2, um, you know, equipment, CO2 tank, you know, it shouldn't cost that much. Um, to get a decent equipment for really anything, it's going to cost like an arm and a leg. Um, so it, I kind of fell into this trap too um, when I started. You know, I had my 125, you know, it, I put a bunch of money into it, you know, got a bunch of stuff already. And down the road, I was like, oh crap, you know, I, I needed CO2 to grow half of these plants that I bought. And I didn't really want to spend, you know, as much money towards the CO2 as I should have. So this is where a lot of people fall into this trap, and I'm kind of, kind of help you guys avoid this. Um, invest, invest in a really good regulator. Um, I started off, and you know, I'm gonna name it because a lot of people go to these companies anyways. I started off with Milwaukee. It was probably the, you know, the entry level. Everybody gets this first, and they figure out, you know, they use it for like a, a year or so and they switch off. Um, I bought a Milwaukee and then I went to an Aquatech which is about you know the same like tier level um, it was like slightly more expensive and I had the same issues with both of them. So the issue was um, since they're uh, solenoid uh, regulars 
basically they have a mechanical failure that is prone um, to happen eventually. Basically the valve would open and close and what happened to one of them was the um, uh, bubble counter uh, solution um, started leaking very slowly but it slowly leaked in and, un in and under into the solenoid where the valve would open and close. So what happened is it's really um, the the liquid is a, a really like sticky uh, liquid um, to read the bubbles uh, accurately and basically over time it would open and close and basically it got sticky and it wouldn't open some of the time um, so basically I had to like open that up fix it and then you know it really didn't work the same because I didn't really trust you know is this gonna ever like stick again ever if it's going to like open and close correctly so I had that problem with my Milwaukee my Aquatech um, I bought and this one wouldn't turn on with the timer going on and off. So basically some days it will go on and off like perfectly and then some days it will go on and then the timer will go off and it wouldn't go off. So same thing there, the valve sometimes will get stuck just you know on an on position and it'll just keep opening. So it comes, it's really bad um, because what happens is if you don't know, you're not home, um, you're still pumping CO2 into the tank and if you don't have any like aeration in the tank um, to help like cancel that out your fish can die um, I had you know I ran into this problem twice with my nano tanks and with smaller tanks with CO2 if you're pumping that much CO2 into your tank it's within like an hour or 30 minutes your fish can all die so um, with regulators just avoid the hassle and just invest in a really good regulator I'm not saying you know these other ones don't work you know they probably do work like 80% of the time, 90% of the times, but there's always a chance of failure. I mean, it's it's the same way with everything else, but this one has a mechanical um, failure that's prone to happen every time. The other drawback is every time you swap out the reg um, the regulator to your um, CO2 tank, you have to always buy these stupid washers, these plastic super washers. They're super cheap, but you always have to replace them um, every time you disconnect them and reconnect them because they're like crushed washers and they're supposed to like one size fit when you put it in. Um, so it's just another like hassle, right? What I recommend is get a electronic like CO2 unit, basically. You don't have to you know, worry about mechanical failures. Um, you know, the one company that I have and I've gone with after you know, these two failures is Carbon Doser. Um, and I have never failed. It's super accurate. And the other ones, they just don't compare. Um, another good company is Greenleaf Aquariums. Um, I haven't tried them personally, but I've heard good stuff about them. So, you know, I, I may throw it out there and say, you know, maybe give them a try too. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at regulators and you see something for like $50, $100, I would stay away from those. Um, unless, you know, you're buying to use one of these other ones that, um, that are well known.